Leonardo DiCaprio is a top actor with many film roles, but like anyone else, it wasn't always this way. DiCaprio struggled in his early career before films like Romeo and Juliet and Titanic cemented his box office clout. Today's video shows you how he succeeded in his acting career and became what he is today. DiCaprio was fired from his first acting job for being rowdy and is now worth 262 million US dollars. Let's dig into his life and learn important lessons from him. Beginnings Leonardo Willem DiCaprio, popularly known as DiCaprio, was born in Los Angeles, California on November 11, 1974. He's the only child of a legal secretary, Ermelin, and an underground publisher, comics writer, and distributor, George DiCaprio. His parents met in college and later moved to Los Angeles after completing their graduation. His father has Italian as well as German ancestors. When DiCaprio was a year old, his father left the family home after he fell in love with another woman. His parents desired to raise their son together, so they became neighbors by moving to a twin cottage with a shared garden in Los Angeles. He spent four years at the Los Angeles Center for Enriched Studies and then at Seeds Elementary School before he joined the John Marshall High School. DiCaprio later stated that he disliked public school and preferred to audition to get an acting job to help his family with their financial situation. However, after his third year of high school, he dropped out after attaining a general equivalency diploma. DiCaprio stated that, as a child, he wanted to be an actor or a marine biologist. Still, he chose the latter because he enjoyed imitating people and impersonating characters, as well as seeing people's reactions to his actions. His interest in acting began when he was two years old spontaneously danced on stage at a festival, and received a positive response from the audience. He was also inspired by his stepbrother's performance in a TV commercial, for which Ferrer earned $50,000. When he was 14, he began appearing in commercials for Mattel's Matchbox Cars, which he considers his first role. Later, he could be seen in commercials for Bubble Yum, Kraft Singles, as well as Apple Jacks. He played Glenn in two episodes of the TV show The New Lassie in 1989. DiCaprio struggled to find an agent at the start of his career. When he found one, he suggested DiCaprio change his name from Leonardo DiCaprio to Lenny Williams, and that was just to appeal to the American crowd, which DiCaprio declined. Despite 100 auditions, DiCaprio remained unemployed for one and a half years. Feeling dejected, he almost gave up acting. Following his lack of success, he then abandoned his acting career, but that's when his father came at his supporter and persuaded him to continue with his skills. Getting motivated by his father's support and the desire to support his mother financially, he continued with his acting auditions. After one of his mother's friends, a talent agent, recommended him to cast directors. He got roles in about 20 TV commercials. During this time, DiCaprio was represented by popular headshot manager and photographer Bob Villard. He began regularly acting on television in the early 1990s, beginning with a role in the pilot of The Outsiders in 1990, as well as one episode of Santa Barbara, the soap opera in the same year, where he played the young Mason Capwell. When DiCaprio was cast in Parenthood, which was a series based on the film released in 1989 of the same name, his career prospects improved. He studied Joaquin Phoenix's performance in the original film to prepare for the role of Gary Buckman, who was a troubled adolescent. That year, he was nominated for two Youth and Film Awards for Best Young Actor starring in a new television series for Parenthood and Best Young Actor in a Daytime Series for Santa Barbara. He appeared on The Fun House, a children's game show around this time, where he performed numerous stunts, and one of the most popular was to catch a fish inside of a mini pool using only his teeth. In addition, DiCaprio appeared in an uncredited episode of Roseanne in 1991. Being committed to his craft 
Being a great performer sometimes entails suffering for your art. Leonardo DiCaprio learned the hard way while filming the thriller Django Unchained. This character cut his hand during a lengthy monologue and filmed the entire thing while bleeding profusely. According to DiCaprio, while cutting himself clearly hurt, it gave the scene a unique edge that it didn't have before. The problem was that he'd done a lot of damage. So to make sure the post-production was easier, they did every scene after that with it looking injured and the cut covered up, so the edit could omit it. Fortunately, it was not removed. Calvin DiCaprio confronts Django, played by Jamie Foxx, and Dr. King, played by Christoph Waltz, for lying to him in the scene in question. He delivered a rousing speech in a Western accent, and the glass broke when he slammed his hand on the table. Blood started pumping out from his wound, but Leonardo treated it as if that was normal. That's impressive stuff. And it adds another wrinkle to Calvin's image as a murderous sociopath. What difference does more figurative blood make if literal blood from his hands doesn't bother him? Director Quentin was so impressed that he added it to the film. The scene earned him a well-deserved Golden Globe nomination. The Long Road to Oscar It was not uncommon for the popular Academy Awards to make a director or an actor wait for seven nominations before awarding them with an Oscar. Surprisingly, Al Pacino had seven nominations before winning Best Actor for Scent of a Woman. And not only that, even Paul Newman had to wait for a similar time. But in Leonardo's case, it appears that his Oscar drought is currently the focus for many. Martin Scorsese, the director who directed DiCaprio in five of his films, and even the legendary filmmaker, lost seven times before winning with The Departed. So the question is, will DiCaprio's losing streak end? In 1994, the first nomination was for Best Supporting Actor for playing a role in What's Eating Gilbert Grape. In 2005, he got nominated for Best Actor in his massive hit movie The Aviator. In 2007, Best Actor for his role in Blood Diamond. And in 2014, Best Actor for his role in The Wolf of Wall Street. He was always within touching distance to his first Oscar. Finally winning his first Oscar. In 2016, Leonardo DiCaprio received his one and only Oscar for Best Actor Award. He won the award for his performance as the raucous wilderness man Hugh Glass in the 2016 film The Revenant. What was the scene which the Oscar was the defining moment? Leonardo DiCaprio was playing the role of Hugh Glass. The Oscar winning scene was when Hugh Glass was out hunting when a bear charges at him as he lines up his shot. The bear attacks him and shakes him violently from side to side like a ragged doll. The bear leaves him alone for some time and then proceeded to attack him again after taking another shot at the bear. Hugh Glass played dead, reaches out for his knife, and proceeds to stab the bear to death. The scene was both terrifying and unforgettable, but at the same time, keeping the audiences at the edge of their seat. Speech after winning an Oscar Leonardo DiCaprio addressed climate change instead of making a lengthy statement to thank his fans, friends, and family after collecting an award. He addressed a significant issue using the platform. He said that The Revenant was about how man interacts with the natural world. The most serious threat to our entire species is climate change, which is real and happening right now. In the end, he thanked everyone and urged them not to take planet Earth for granted. Leonardo DiCaprio as an environmentalist DiCaprio is one of the highly popular and vocal celebrities working for the climate change movement. From young age, he was fascinated by ecology, watching documentaries about rainforest depletion, as well as the extinction of species or habitats. However, he has stated that he is agnostic and that the environment and planet is primary to him than his spirituality. In 1998, he founded the Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to raising environmental awareness. Although it's surrounded by all aspects of the environment, primarily organization focuses on the increasing issue of global warming, biodiversity preservation, and the promotion of renewable energy. He organized a profitable 11th hour fine art auction two years later, which raised around $40 million for his nonprofit foundation. Bid as if the planet's fate depended on us, he told the attendees. Since then, the event has become the highest-grossing environmental charity event in history. 
Ban Ki-moon, the United Nations Secretary General named Leonardo DiCaprio a United Nations Messenger of Peace, with a special focus on climate change on the 16th of September of 2014. He spoke at the United Nations again in April of 2016, before he signed the Paris Climate Change Agreement. DiCaprio owns eco-friendly electric automobiles. But on the other hand, his use of large yachts and private jets has prompted accusations of hypocrisy, and it was all because of their massive carbon footprints. Struggles with OCD OCD stands for Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. OCD is a mental condition that results in obsessions and compulsions. A person with OCD will focus on unwanted thoughts, and when they focus, these thoughts turn into obsessions. Leonardo DiCaprio suffered from this disease in his childhood as well as when he was an adult. He's admitted that he often feels the urge to walk through doorways countless times and to step on stains left by gum. However, he was able to keep these tendencies at bay. Generous and kind-hearted. Leonardo DiCaprio supported the youngest survival of the Titanic in her old age. Milvina Dean was only two months old when the Titanic sank on April 14, 1912. Her father died, however. She and her mother survived the disaster of Titanic. She was struggling in her old age for paying the bills of the nursing home. Leonardo DiCaprio helped her and donated $20,000 to this cause. Unfortunately, she survived only six months afterwards. Leonardo has also unofficially adopted an orphan girl who lives in Mozambique. He sends her money for food expenses monthly and also frequently calls to check on her. So this is about the successful journey of Leonardo DiCaprio and how he became who he is today. His dedication to his craft, passion to save the earth, and generosity are truly inspirational. Did his journey inspire you? How will you describe Leonardo DiCaprio in three words? Let us know in the comments below, and remember to subscribe for more inspiring stories.